Hi, I'm Derek, and this is DC to Daylight, where we explore electronics in the realm of DC, audio frequencies, RF, and into the visible spectrum of light. Today's episode, we're going to continue on with uh, resonant circuits, tank circuits, and we're going to apply them to a project that I'm really excited about. It is a lightning detector. See, I'm a bit of a ham radio nerd, and I have antennas in the backyard, I have antennas in the attic, all around the house, and I like to use them to talk to people around the world. The problem is, lightning also likes to talk through the antennas. They make great lightning rods. So I've got a pretty cool enclosure that I want to use for this project. I've got a gauge we're going to put in here, and I've got the circuit board that I designed and we're gonna put that in here along with an Arduino Uno. And of course, the antenna that we're going to use, the tuned circuit, uh, will pick up the lightning strike and all of these things in combination will make this thing work. Fingers crossed. Let's get started. I like to think of resonance as the frequency that some system is wiggled at, which excites a natural oscillation of that system. Basically, if you impart some energy at the right moment in time, you can make that object oscillate at a high amplitude. Examples of oscillation at resonance are all around us. A plucked guitar string, the swinging of a pendulum, and some examples of resonance we try to avoid, like the natural resonance of physical structures, as in this example of the Tacoma Narrows Bridge. In the case of our lightning detector, we have an inductor, capacitor, and resistor all in parallel, which make up our resonance circuit. If we excite this circuit by feeding it with an RF signal, like lightning, at the right frequency, then we can take that signal and use various algorithms to analyze its characteristics. We can then determine if it's a lightning strike or man-made noise to be filtered out. This is the job of our friend, the AS3935 Franklin Lightning Sensor from AMS. Now it just so happens there's a dead spot in the electromagnetic spectrum around 500 kilohertz, where there isn't a lot of human-generated radio transmissions, but where broadband energy from lightning strikes shows up. So the capacitor in our circuit is around 1000 picofarads, and the inductor is 100 microhenries. From the previous episode of DC to Daylight on resonant circuits, we know that resonance in an LC circuit is equal to 1 over 2 pi, the square root, of L times C. From this, we can calculate the resonant frequency at 500 kilohertz. And we can see that on the software-defined radio. So let's go take a look at that. So here's a look at uh, the SDR and about 500 kilohertz where this red line is. That's where our little circuit board is gonna be listening. And you can see it's pretty quiet right there. And uh, there's an ongoing thunderstorm. I put the GoPro camera at the top right. You can see there outside on the balcony and we'll see how uh, the signals on the SDR correspond to lightning strikes. The horizontal lines you see are the broadband energy from the lightning strikes. And uh, that's what our circuit board is gonna pick up on. And these uh, lines you see going vertically on the left and right, those are the AM broadcast band. Well, there's a good one right there. Great example of what our circuit is gonna be looking for. All right, so now that we know what our circuit's looking for, let's go over to the actual uh, system overview uh, to see what we're gonna put together today. Here is our schematic for the board that I put together, um, the Element 14 lightning detector. Uh, so the AS3935 is the heart of the system here. It's got a tank circuit connected to N plus and N minus, that's the analog front end, and we're communicating using I squared C. Um, and there's really not a lot to it. We've got some pull-up resistors for I squared C. We've got a shot key diode for reverse polarity protection. The 3.3 volts going to this header pin comes from our Arduino Nano. There's a problem though. If you do some internet researching, the AS3935 does not really work very well over I squared C. In fact, if you go to the SparkFun website, it says they no longer support I squared C because the functionality is not really supported by the vendor which is problematic because that's how I designed my board. So I can read registers, I can write to registers, but I can't actually get the chip to listen to the tank circuit. There's an internal oscillator in here that needs to ensure that this is operating at 500 kilohertz. That's not functioning. I wrote software, I designed the board, doesn't work, so that's out the window. So to get this thing working, I ordered the SparkFun uh, lightning detector board, which is the same circuit as this, but instead of I squared C, it's configured to use SPI or serial peripheral interface. All right. So unfortunately, you know, I wanted to design this board so that anybody could build it and you guys could uh, make it on your own. But 
we're actually going to end up using this, which I mean, they already have software written, uh, so it should be pretty much plug and play. But let's look at the system overview of how we want to integrate this into what we're doing. So we're going to talk to the Spark Fund board over a serial peripheral interface. OK, so on D13, we're going to use uh, our SPI clock signal that's on this header. We're going to use MISO and MOSI, which are also on this header. And we're going to use pin 10 for our chip select. And these are the four signals that we need for SPI. And we're going to have a series of white and red LEDs. So D5 through 7 are going to be for our white LEDs. And we're going to use these guys right here for the red LEDs. All right, so here's basically what we want to do from a system level, okay? We have our Arduino Nano that runs at 5 volts. We have our AS3935 that runs at 3.3 volts. And we're going to have to do some logic level translation between the two. Um, I'm just using a resistor and a Zener diode. So signals coming from the 3.3 volt side of the uh, lightning detector board going to the Nano do not require translation. Going from the Arduino Nano from 5 volts to 3.3 volts, if we keep banging this thing with 5 volts, eventually we're gonna damage the GPIO pins. So what we have to do is uh, clip it using a Zener circuit, and that goes for chip select, MISO, MOSI, and clock, okay? LED one, two, and three are here. We have a right, white, a red, white, red, white, red, all right? And we also have this analog gauge. So the analog gauge uh, will tell us how far away the estimated lightning strike is. So this guy can actually give us um, an indication of distance. If you recall from Ohm's law, this is a one milliamp meter. If we take uh, the voltage divided by resistance, which is five volts from the Arduino Nano divided by 5K, that gives us one milliamp for full deflection. And this is driven with a PWM signal. So the closer the distance, the, the closer this needle will be to 255, okay? That's the idea. So anyway, what should it do? At idle, these LEDs are also PWM control from 0 to 255. It should be half brightness, which would be 128 on the white LEDs. If there is a notification of a lightning strike from this chip, okay, we should chase the white LEDs for a second, spin them around, and then hold for five seconds with the gauge deflected wherever it uh, should be. If there's a disturber, this can also detect disturbances like light switches, man-made noise that are false triggers. Okay, these will light up red or chase and we'll hold it for two seconds just so we know during the debugging process uh, what's going on. If the signal to noise ratio is too high, we go solid red with all three LEDs. We do a while one loop and we just hold here. Okay, that means that there's a serious problem and we need to probably reset it. Maybe we could automatically reset it later on or something else. And do I want to add a beeper to this? Uh, possibly in the future I would do that but I have to wait until the next storm season to set all of the parameters and tweak everything to make sure that this operates reliably because there's a lot of background noise in the household environment. So now comes the exciting part of putting everything together. So I've got my gauge in here. I've got all of my wires to the LED and the gauge come up through here. Here's my 5K resistor in the positive line for the gauge. I'm gonna heat shrink the Arduino Nano. This is a bundle of the Zener diodes that are clamping the voltages coming from the Arduino Nano going to our SparkFun board, okay? So I've got ground power, my interrupt pin. So when I detect a lightning strike, that talks back to the Arduino Nano. I've got my chip select, uh, my clock, MISO and MOSI. Okay, those are my serial communication lines that go to the board. I'm going to keep this guy active, the uh, USB port. I drilled a hole through the side of this guy uh, so I can run a cable through there until next storm season when I can uh, really test this out with some lightning strikes. And this will all get shoved in here and this spark fun board since my board doesn't work i have a, a blank one here and i've stripped off all the copper on this side so it won't interfere with the antenna 
what I'm going to do is uh, probably just hot glue it for now and then we'll heat shrink this and then this assembly will uh, screw onto the metal plate that's in here. All right, so everything is put together and I'll admit that this was a little bit of a frustrating project because of the I squared C situation. The other frustrating part of it is that we need to trigger a lightning strike and I don't have a storm nearby to do that with. In fact, storm season is over. So any tweaking that I do is gonna have to be done at the beginning of the next storm season in 2022, which is probably in the spring. Um, up until now, we've had pretty periodic and predictable storms every day, but it's cold now and they've died off. I've got a little coil here that has about 200 turns of magnet wire on it connected to my function generator. And the purpose of that is to trigger a lightning strike, I need to sweep through the passband of the RC tank circuit on the detector board. So I do that by just turning this knob, okay? And in doing so, it makes it think that there's a, a lightning strike. And if I do it just right, it won't think it's noise. So let's try it right now. All right, so let's try to sweep through it. Okay, so it detected it as a lightning strike because we've energized the tank circuit briefly. Now, I'm gonna move my coil out of the way. Um, and I had to really severely attenuate it down to negative 50 dB and sweep it through the, the frequency range. So a really, really faint signal. Okay, so it should be sensitive to detect things far away. So what we can do to trigger a transient signal, a lot of people online are getting frustrated because they're trying to use grill lighters to simulate a lightning strike. Well, this is a very fast impulse. It's not a sine wave like it's looking for. So if I do this, flashing red, I know it might be hard to see on camera, but it detected noise and our software said, hey, fast impulse, must be a noise. We can also do the same thing with a drill Okay, and it detects noise. So now if I put the coil up here and it'll look for noise, the first thing that it does when you turn it on. It immediately goes full deflection. It says, hey, the noise floor is too high. I can't do anything else. And if you recall, we put that while one loop there so that it would just stop and freeze and we'd have to go intervene somehow and debug it, okay? So there are the three functions that we're looking for. All right, well, that sums up this episode. Um, I didn't show a lot of the frustration that I went through with the whole I squared C thing. They could probably get a kind of undercurrent of my frustration with it. Um, but I wanted to point out that what we're trying to do with this chip or what AMS is trying to do is pull out a specific signal from what's a very noisy environment. If you go lower in frequency, the more environmental noises, specifically from all the power supplies and wall warts and cell phone chargers, switch mode power supplies generate a huge amount of noise. Okay, and without advanced di digital signal processing, it's difficult to extract a signal and find exactly what you're looking for. So given that this thing is on a single chip, I think it's doing a pretty good job, especially compared to other lightning sensors out there that are just just a few transistors on the tank circuit. So I'm really looking forward to the next storm season because I really want to tune this thing. There are a lot of parameters that we can change to filter out man-made noise and really get this working the way I want. I'd love to automate actually disconnecting my antennas from my radios. So anyway, if anybody has experience with a lightning detector, specifically how to simulate lightning, and have used this chip before, I would love to hear about it down in the comments. Of course, you can always interact with me in the forum at element14.com slash DC to daylight. I'm always poking around there. I read every single comment and uh, I look forward to hearing from you. Anyway, this has been a long but fun project and uh, that's it for me. So see you next time.